All right, folks, welcome back to Portugal is Vasco da Gama, and we start to launch our expedition. So we had just, I had just hired some crew with my number six action. Now we're moving on to my number seven action, which again, it doesn't have any extra cost. So here it is, it was me, and it is me launching an expedition. Oh, by the way, I, I just noticed in between, um, I accidentally took this off of the table. I really should have, this was the disc that I, I, I should have moved this disc into position to indicate that nobody else can grab the king this round. I accidentally took this one off the board. That was dumb. Anyway, so I am launching an expedition. I've got a ship. I've got the captain. I've got the crew. Now remember, this ship required three unique crew. So I'm going to have to give up three colors. I'll give up a purple, a blue, and a gray. Okay, let's go back in the cup. And by flipped, now this ship has been launched. It's got a crew, but it still needs a captain. Boop! Now it's got a captain, and it's be, uh, a crewed and captain ship can be set on an expedition. And since I, I've just chosen to do that, I'm going to slap her down. Now, it's a number four ship, so it can't go very far. It can never make it to Mombasa. It can basically only has access to Mozambique and uh, Terra del, I don't know how to pronounce this one, and Natal. Because you can see each one of these has a four space. So, and here's the interesting thing. This is a, this is a tough choice to make because... Um, well, actually, with a four, it's not that tough. If I had a higher one, if I had like a six, I might choose to you know put it in the lowest space or in a higher space. Oh, is that actually is that going to happen? No, it's not. Okay. Anyway, though, so basically, I can only put this in a four. And if I remember, when I pick a spot to put it in, if I put it here, I'll get another ship for free. If I put it here, I'll get a crew member free. If I put it here, I'll get a captain for free. I think, I think, I think, I think, I will put it here. Now, whenever you put a ship down, or you know, whenever you launch an expedition, you immediately score victory points equal to the place you end up. So I scored four victory points just now. One, two, three, four. Uh, and you get your bonus. In this case, I get one crew. So I can take one off the board or I could draw a blind. Now, I want to have a variety of color. And if I draw a blind, I might end up getting another gray or another purple, since that's what I already have. So instead, I'll take either a blue or an orange, I think. Um, I guess I'll take the blue. Because if I had left the blue there, when Jen goes to buy, she could buy one color, pay one buck, and she would have been able to get two blues. But now I've taken one of the blues, so she has less she can buy there. All right. So I went here, I got my bonus, and I also got my four points. That's it. It's simple. You have to have a launchable ship, and then you launch it. Okay. Although there's a lot more that goes into thinking about this, but that doesn't really start happening until you get some higher value ships. Well, maybe I'll play through another round and we'll see some of that. But anyway, so anyway, that was my number seven action. Now on to number eight. It is Jen. She can hire crew now. Although, here's the thing. She only has four bucks left. She would have to spend to get... Oh, uh, see, I, 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 I totally got it wrong. If there was a ship out here, like say this one, if this ship were out here and it only required two color crew, that ship would cost her one buck. And buying two color crew would cost her three bucks. So she would have enough. She would have three plus one. She'd be able to get another ship launched this turn. But all the ships that are out here require at least three crew colors, which costs her six bucks, which she cannot afford. So she now has a choice. She could buy some crew for a ship that she won't be able to launch, or she could pass and, let's see, what was it? It was number eight. She could pass and make two bucks, so she has more money for later. Now, if she passes on buying crew, she's also passing on getting more captains as well. But remember, she got a free captain right from the get-go, so I don't think she cares so much about getting a captain right now. Although, this is the interesting thing. If she comes here and buys no crew, then that means... Since she got no crew, uh, buying a captain would be totally free. So Jen has three choices. She could pass and make two bucks. She could spend some money and get some crew, uh, and then you know, and 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 maybe spend some money and get a captain. Or she could get no crew and get a captain for free. Those are all good choices. But Jen is so low on cash, and she has no more cash coming. I think Jen is going to pass and make the two bucks. All right, there we go. So she just made two bucks. Right, so that was number eight. Now, action number nine. This is me again. I am visiting the nobles. And now I would love to come up here and get my own bonus action, but Jen's blocking me, so I cannot come up there. But what I can do, let's see. And remember, I talked about this before. I could have come over here to the monastery, gotten the Monsignor on board, and that would give me another missionary. And so, boom, I've got four colors, which means in the next round, I'd be able to get 
I, I'd be able to captain a ship that requires four colors. You know, like this seven, you know, that's very, very cool. So I could do that. Or I could come over here and I could take the other merchant away from Jen. Or I could just make four bucks and I'll have more cash for next round. I think though what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy from Jen. So boom, I have just made friends with him. He has abandoned Jen. And now because we've done that, I get access to the ship he is going to launch this turn. And I could launch it right now immediately or I could wait till later. And I think... What the heck? I will launch it immediately. I'll launch it right now. And so now, remember how Jen, she got to put this 9 wherever she wanted. I, this is an 11. I could put it any place. But I got to be thinking about wherever I put it, it's going to get me either a free captain, a free crew, a free ship, 2 bucks or 1 buck. And I think actually I'm going to put it here. Now I don't get the 5 points because the other merchant gets that. But I do get the benefit. I get one um, crew member of my choice. And I think I'll take this orange here because now I've got four unique colors. Very nice. I've got you know four different ships rolls. Okay, so that's pretty good. Nice. And what's more importantly, this port has now filled up, and that will come into play later. And actually, Jen's really happy about that. Oh, I didn't think about that. No, because Jen, right? Okay, it didn't matter. Ah. Hmm. So that's interesting, though. If I See, I don't have to put this here right now. I could wait. And I could wait to see where Jen is going to launch this boat. Because if Jen launches down here, it's very, very different for me than if Jen launches over here and takes this four spot as opposed to this four spot. Because if she launches into this four spot, then maybe I want to take this ship and move it over here. Because that will fill up this port, and that means Jen will lose this ship for reasons that will become clear later. Whereas alternatively, if she comes down here, if I put, actually if I put it here either way, then Jen loses that ship either way. Oh wow, I didn't think about that. You know what, I think I am going to wait. So I'm not, although I would like, well, eh, I'm just going to put this back. I'm going to wait. I could, I could have done this immediately, but instead I'm just taking the guy and I'll, I have two opportunities. I can launch his ship immediately when I become friends with him, or I can wait until what is called the navigation phase. I'm going to wait until the navigation phase, because I'm going to wait and see what Jen does. Okay. So anyway, so that was my number uh, eight action, I think. Now we need number 10, and that is Jen. Okay, so Jen, she could buy another ship, and she needs another ship because she uh, has a captain. Let's see here. That one's gone, that one's gone, but I think she will buy another ship. She could actually afford two. She's got six bucks, so she could spend uh, four bucks and get two ships. But that's a bit expensive. I think she's only going to buy one. Now, what is she going to buy? Let's see, she has no crew at all. So I think she's only going to spend one buck, and she's just going to buy the last ship that only requires three crew members, or three crew colors. She's going to take that one. Now, she, Captain can't go on here because we haven't, she hasn't put a crew on it yet. All right, and, so that, and that leaves her with five bucks, so she's doing pretty good for money for next round. Okay, and so we've done all these actions, but wait, there is one more action. Remember, since Jen was in good with the king, action number 21 happens now. Okay, which means Jen gets to launch a ship as well. And here's the ship. She's already, it's already uh, got her crew on board. It's got her captain. And like I said, since it's a four, it can go here or here. Hmm. And so, yeah, Jen's got a bit of a pickle. Because if she goes here, it's going to want to move on here, and it might get lost. If she goes here, well, that's the thing. Wherever she puts it, I can make her lose that ship. So I guess what she needs to think about then, does she want to put it over here and get a free captain? Or does she want to put it over here and get another ship? I think she'll put it up here and get a free captain. So she gets another captain. And she gets four points, just like I did. One, two, three, four. All right, and so she has successfully launched that ship. And now Mozambique is almost full. Okay, we have now finished. We have done all 20 actions and the 21 bonus action. We're finished with the worker action phase. Now we go to navigation. And at the beginning of the navigation phase, if this has not been played already, that's when you look to see who has him, and that player gets to play him. So I get to play him now. And remember, I was originally planning on putting him down here and getting another crew member, because that would be awesome. But doing this now would actually hurt me. It would cause me to lose my ship. Because here's what's going to happen. After I'm done placing him, Every port that is completely full, all the ships of that port, are going to try to sail to the next port. So if I put this here, I'm going to force my ship to sail. And that means if it comes over here, there's no four spot and I would lose my ship. 
It would basically return home. So it doesn't do me any good. That's why I waited to see what Jen was going to do. If Jen had put her ship down here, then if I put this here, then when these guys sail, this would come up here and my guy would have room in the next port. But since Jen took this space, it doesn't do me any good to do this here. So instead, I'm going to put him here. Now, I get a captain, which is good because I'm going to need another captain. And um, so that happened. Now we actually start seeing uh, how everything works. Okay. There's nobody up here. We don't care. Nobody up here. We don't care. Nobody up here. We don't care. Hey, Mozambique. Jen is here. And because this ship, as long as this ship stays on the board, Jen makes two bucks at the end of every round. So Jen just made two bucks or florins, whatever they are. But now Mozambique is full. So that means all the ships who are here, they decide it's time to sail from Mozambique to Mombasa. They go from left to right. They always take the highest value space they can. You don't get any choice about it. So this number 11 is going to come over here to the number seven. This number nine is going to come to the number seven. And then Jen's number four, Dun dun dun, there's no place for it to go. It can't go to the six or the five. So this ship is done. It's uh, you know, it's 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 seen, it's seen, it's it's basically sailed as far as it can go, and it just can't be pushed any farther, so it's out of the game. But Jen gets her captain back. So now Jen has three captains. She's set to launch three ships. But it's kind of a bummer. Jen would have loved to have kept this on the board for a while longer because it would keep earning her money over and over and over again. And so now it's gone. That's why she would have loved to put it down here and just it could have stayed here. And, uh, but, but the thing is, in Natal, it was going to have to move up here because Natal was full. And if I had made this full, there, oh, actually, yeah, if she put it here, if I, oh, but that's the thing. If she put it here and I hadn't filled this up, then it wouldn't have been able to sail and it would have gone home as well. So Jen did the best she could with this. It's gone. But she gets one more benefit. Because the ship successfully left Mozambique and finished its journey, even if it's going home, Jen gets two more points. One, two. So we're tied for points. All right. So we resolved Mozambique. Then we come down here to Terra to something or other. I get two bucks for this ship. And since this port is not full, this ship will just stay here and continue to make me money for the rest of the game until the port gets filled up. Either I put a ship here, Jen puts a ship here, or the merchant puts a ship here, in which point then hopefully it'll have some place up here. But if this four is already filled up, then it would have to go home as well. So there is a lot of brinksmanship that goes on with the uh, sailing. I mean, I, I barely scratched the surface. There is so much of this game. A big part of the game is figuring out how you want to risk manage, you know, placing your workers. But an even bigger part is where you're going to launch ships to. Because, I mean, we've had plenty of games where, hey, I've got a big old nine. I could launch here and land nine points. But instead, I'll put it down here in the six points, so I'll get three less points. But that'll fill up Mozambique, and it'll cause all the other ships to move up. And, and you know, so there's lots of consideration that goes on over there. It's really brilliant. A lot of cool stuff. But anyway, so we came down here. Terra is not full, and so I just made my two bucks. This is empty, and we are now done with the navigation. Uh, and then finally, at the end of the round, there's just a little bit of cleanup where, let's see, basically any ships that didn't get built, they're also removed, and new ones come out. Now, we've seen this one. We knew that this one was going to come out and be the new thing that only costs two bucks, and it comes pre- shipped. So, you know, in the, in the previous round, we could have been preparing for that because we could see what was coming. All righty. And so all these ships come out. We started to have some level two ships come out. And a, a thing can go to 11. It needs four color, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that happened. Um, we get these discs back because we no longer need to block these guys. But these guys continue to deliver for us. Jen is still friends with the king, so she gets to hold on to her fifth bonus action. Whereas if I had taken this away from her, she would lose her fifth bonus action. I've still got the leader guy, so I get two more points. And... If, uh, if Jen does not take the merchant guy away from me, I will get to place another merchant tile. So that, you know, that'll come into effect next turn. Let's see. Um, we have to refill the crew. There's at most only up to three new crew members can go into every slot. One, two, three. So here's two purples and an orange. And there's one space in there, we, but we can't put three. We can only fill it up with one. So that place is filled up. In a two player, with more players, of course, there'd be more spaces for crew as well. Let's see. I think that's every. Oh, we move on to round two. And we're ready to go. Oh, wait, oh, wait. But it is, you know, remember this at one point was an economic forecast. Now it is the economy. We, we move this to six. And there are now six bucks 
for some local work and three bucks. So six bucks, that's a big deal. I bet you somebody's gonna take this six bucks. That's a huge windfall. And once again, we have no idea what the economic forecast is gonna bring until after we've placed all our workers. I am still the first player, so I get to go first. If I, and, you know, if I wanna get this really nice four level ship, Maybe I should come here with a, with a, with a risky number. If I want to um, grab the king so I have five workers like Den does, maybe I want to come over here. Because Jen could come over here, and when she eventually gets to activate, she could block me so that I can't get my fifth worker. Or she could take the merchant back, or she could get the six bucks. But there's also a lot of crew to hire over here. Um, you know, hiring one color can get you two workers in either of these spots. Um, so there's a lot to think about. We have just barely scratched the surface and um, but what I do know is I need another ship because I've got a captain. Jen needs three ships. This might be a turn where she actually um, tries to get several ships. She might even spend four bucks to try to get two ships at once so that she can start getting them going. But it's not just the ship she needs, she needs the crew. She's already got one ship. She needs three crew members to man it. So she would love with a single action because with a, with a single expedition action, you can launch multiple ships if they're all going to the same port. So you can spend a few turns and you'll build up a fleet of ships and then launch them all, all at once to Mozambique and score five plus six plus four points and get three captains, etc., etc. You can have huge mega moves in this game or you can just kind of do it drips and drabs, just one um, you know, expedition every round, kind of like what the merchant does. There's a lot of flexibility. The game is just barely started, but I think you guys get an uh, idea. Oh, uh, but the only thing I haven't shown, if somebody had made friends with the bishop, they would have immediately gotten a missionary, and as long as they keep him every round, they get another missionary and another missionary. So that can be hugely powerful too. And so far, nobody's even gotten this guy yet. So somebody's probably going to get him. Somebody's probably going to take this six bucks. Somebody's definitely going to take this Forby, because it only costs two bucks, and you get a fully manned ship ready to launch to Natal or Mozambique, although it can't be launched here because it's full. But a bunch of new ships have come out. If we look at these ships, let's see. Um, like both of these can go five distance, but this one only this one takes two crew, but it gives you no benefits. This requires three crew, but pays you two bucks. So arguably, for only one more crew, you could be making two bucks for several rounds. That's a much better ship than that one. Um, let's see. And uh, you know, and this is an interesting choice too. These can both go distance of nine. This requires four crew. That's hard to get four crew. This one only requires three crew. This one earns you victory points, where this one earns you money. Ah, so those are it's some interesting choices to make about which ship to get, and which noble to take, and which combination of crew to get, and which spaces you try to get. But I'm going to stop right there because hopefully you get a good idea of just how rich and deep and fun and dare I say exciting. I mean, you know, th this game has, well, I'm getting into the final thoughts. Let's save that for the final thoughts, shall we? You can see the button on screen. You can follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.